the notion of humanity suggests that contrary to this classical picture of international law, the world at bottom consists not of a society of states, but of a society of human beings. And then the second idea that operationalizes the Greek chorus is to say that government officials have responsibility that transcend the laws, orders, and ideologies of their own states. And that humanity, the Greek chorus, is entitled uh, to hold them to those responsibilities. Uh, now, that is the idea behind the Nuremberg Trials, at least as Jackson in the United States position envisaged it. It's important to remember that there was not a unanimous chorus calling for trials of the top Nazis. The initial British position was that this is a political decision. The trials would just give them a chance to grandstand uh, and they should be rounded up and shot. The Soviet position was that a political decision had already determined that justice should be done to them, and the sole purpose of trials should be to determine the punishment, not to have a fair trial examining questions of guilt. And Jackson, in the US position, said the problem with political, making this a political determination, is that that is not jurisgenerative. That does not create international law. That doesn't do something to translate into legal categories this very odd idea of the imagined community of humanity. Uh, later, France and Russia objected to the idea of classifying aggression as a crime under, under international law, and they wanted to simply make it a crime when it was committed by the Axis countries. And again, Jackson and the United States objected to that. Uh, they, Jackson did not win that fight entirely. The resulting charter was a compromise in which the the tribunal's uh, jurisdiction was limited only to the Axis countries, but nothing in the definition of the crimes limited to the Axis countries. And then finally, in 1950, when the United Nations General Assembly uh, declares that the Nuremberg Principles are international law, the American agenda of uh, trying to institutionalize and operationalize the idea of humanity uh, is fulfilled, and in particular, Two of the principles of the Nuremberg Charter, uh, and it would become then the UN's Nuremberg Principles, are very important. The first, the fact that internal law, national law that is, does not impose a penalty for an act which constitutes a crime under international law, does not relieve the person who committed the act from responsibility under international law. So the fact that it's not a domestic crime doesn't mean that it's not a crime. Second, the fact that a person acted pursuant to order of his government or of a superior does not relieve him from responsibility under international law, provided that a moral choice was in fact possible to him. So that takes away the defense of government orders and superior <laughs> orders. Uh, now, if you put that together with the notion that crimes against humanity can be crimes even if they're committed by a state against its own citizens, you begin to see how this notion of humanity that comes out in the term crimes against humanity affects not just that one article, but the entire idea of Nuremberg, which is penetrating the shell of state sovereignty uh, and showing that officials can be held to laws that are other than the laws of their own states. And that actually uh, uh, begins to manifest, manifest itself again and again in the late 40s, uh, which you might think of as, you know, as the axial age for the creation of international law. Uh, it's the time of the Universal Declaration of Human Rights. It's the time of the Genocide Convention. It's the time of the Geneva Conventions. Uh, and it uh, is a tremendous um, efflorescence, uh, flowering of, uh, of the idea that there will be a humanitarian law that will govern the conduct of combatants in the future. 